Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra and today in Shiksha Mantra we have a very 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 interesting discussion. Actually it's the continuation of the discussion of the objects we have uh, just discussed uh, just quite a few days ago. So if you haven't checked the discussion here I am putting the link in the i button above from where you can check it. But the question is why I have placed those toys in the blackboard? What are the relation between the objects and the playthings? Are they somehow related? So that would be our discussion for today. So let's begin our discussion in Siksha Mantra right now. Yes, dear friends, objects as we have already learned, it's, it's so very important for our learning of English grammar that without the proper concept of the object, it's very difficult for us to proceed. But how objects are related to the toys? That's the question which we will find the answer for. If you consider the objects, they are actually the receiver of the action. But what's about these playthings? Sometimes you find the children, they go to the kitchen, they watch their mother cooking and now they start nagging, mom, I want the stove, I want the pressure cooker, I want or the spatula, I want the saucepan, I would also cook. Now, the mother provide them some huge cauldron, some huge uh, kettle, etc, etc. But it's of no use for them. Now, they ask for the knife and the chopping board or the chopper. Now, they can't be given this because it's very dangerous. So, what the father does? He goes to the market. He buy toys like this and then the child is very happy because it started cooking with those toy things, with those play things, with those cooking toys, kitchen toys. So when it's quite below his ability, it's beyond his ability to deal with these actual things. So, he is provided with some playthings. This, in our discussion of object, we have such an object which is also like a child and it's also provided with playthings or the toys. So, let's see what object is this and uh, how the object works here. Yes, dear friends, if I write down a sentence like this, he slept. Now you will see that there the verb slept, this is an intransitive verb, it is an intransitive verb and being an intransitive verb, this verb cannot accept an object. If we want to put an object for this verb, this verb does not have the capability to contain an object because this is an intransitive verb but the verb sleep like a child started nagging i want an object i'm feeling in uncomfortable without an object please provide me an object oh subject please provide me an object so like a child it started nagging so what the subject will do the subject had thought out okay uh, uh, you need an object so, let's provide you a pseudo object, an object which is not heavier, which is like those cooking toys, those utensils, those toy utensils. So, here what they have done, they have put the verb, an object like this. Let me write it down and you will understand what I am saying.
So what the uh, what's the object here? The object is sleep. This object they have provided him. Now if you look at it, what's the special it about this object? It's a derivative of the verb itself. Just have a look at it. He slept a sound sleep. Now both the term slept and sleep, they are derivatives of sleep. So the same word is used once as a verb and then as an object. So this is a lighter object. Now it's very easy for the intransitive verb to carry this object and we get a very special object here and the object is called cognate object. Yes, dear friends, this is what we call a cognate object. When the verb and the object, they are derived from the same words, from the same word, they are but just two different parts of speech. And we call them cognate object. There's another example. Let's have another example and uh, it would be easier for us to understand. He ran a race. Yes, dear friends. If you look at this sentence, what you will see, run and race, they are the same thing, but only we have used run as the verb and res as the object and we call it cognate object. So this is how when a pseudo object, a derivative of the verb is used for the object, it becomes cognate object. But there's another change which had happened at the same time. Now, after getting this, obviously, this is not an intransitive verb anymore. Rather, this is a transitive verb. If we consider what verb is it, ran, it's obviously a transitive verb. This is no more an intransitive verb. Yes, dear friends, that's how a cognate object may transform a trans an intransitive verb, sorry, an intransitive verb into a transitive verb. But this is only like a plaything. This is only like those toys of a child. That's how cognate object is a replica, a representation of a child's playthings. That's all for today. We are returning very soon with many, many such interesting discussion on English grammar. So stay tuned with us. We are returning very soon. Till then, bye-bye. Happy learning.